to praise him and I'm going to say good morning but would y'all do it again say praise the name of Jesus. we didn't know if we would make it back into the sanctuary and so we thank God hallelujah And we pray that 596,000 souls went to be home with the Lord so that there would be no more suffering, that there would be no more chance for the enemy to mess with them again. Amen. But we have a responsibility who were not in that 596,000. Somebody give the Lord a praise. We need to give the Lord a praise. That while we are still here, while we are still alive, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Would you say it again with me? Say praise the name. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. 
give God all the glory and we give him all the praise. And we welcome you, hallelujah, into the worship of our precious King. Amen. We bless his mighty name and we thank him. Amen. And we're going to ask you, just like we did when you were at the house, we're going to ask you, those of you who are still at the house, to consecrate the space where you are right now. Declare that every place that your feet will plant will be territory for the Lord and that everything that your hand will touch will prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to Haskell Heights First Baptist Church, otherwise known as The Height. And we thank God for this opportunity for us to be here in the midst of his presence. Amen. We bless God for who he is and all that he has done, all that he stands yet to do. Amen. And we thank you for being, counting it not robbery, just to be with us in worship today. You may be seated. Amen. Thank the Lord. We bless God just for this precious day. And we say to, to all those that are entering in, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. How many folks know that the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. And for that, we bless him. Amen. Glory be to God. We, we thank you. Amen. And we, we want to say that um, you can also reach us on our website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com and we also uh, acknowledge that you can reach us also on uh, our church app if you've never had an opportunity to download our church app amen just take out your mobile phone go to your app store and type in Haskell Heights First Baptist Church and it'll say the height and you just press that download it and you can keep uh, track of all the things that we're doing here at the height amen and we bless god for you we want to say happy birthday to all those who are experiencing birthdays on today who today is your birthday we say to you happy birthday and anyone who's having a birthday between now and next sunday when we bless bless the lord we'll be back together again we say to you happy birthday thank god for bringing you to the earth realm you are precious to us and we thank god for your life because your life is meaningful for the kingdom building assignment that's been placed upon us we say happy anniversary to those who are celebrating anniversaries god bless you amen for your achievement and for your perseverance we thank god that he will bless you in the days to come even greater amen to do greater numbers than these than you have done even in previous times amen so we bless god for that amen we're going to ask today that you would keep the uh, hamilton family in your prayers and in your hearts as they recover from their loss of uh, sister shirley hamilton amen and thank those of you again who helped us during that during that time to serve the family amen and and we also are going to ask you this morning to please be in prayer uh, with the with the Bookert family, amen. Uh, Sister Steiny, Sister Sandra, the entire Bookert family, uh, at the untimely loss of their um, their loved one Lorenzo Bookert, amen. And we're asking that you would keep them in your prayers and uh, extend your arms for comfort, amen. Uh, want to want to announce to you that Cindy, Sister Linda Middleton went in the pool this morning. That's why we we had to go do the rush change routine, amen, but we were in the pool, amen, and we sang over her, take me to the water, y'all know what I mean, so we thank God for her life and for her being baptized into the fellowship, into the body of Christ and to, uh, to be a part of this fellowship here at Haskell Heights, amen. Um, we are in need of housing, we are in need of housing right now, a few of our uh, loved ones are in need of, of housing. If you know of a house that is for rent uh, and, and um, you know of someone on your, in your neighborhood, you own a house or anyone else, uh, we, we have some need, amen? And we're asking that you would please uh, just let us know. Get to us um, and let us know. Yes, pastor, we know. We know that the needs are met already, so we're asking that you would just be a part of that obedience amen contact us if you have knowledge of that and we're uh, grateful for that amen we're, we're gonna uh, also tell you that graduation forms are due today because we have to uh, start compiling the information that we need for our graduation services 
on the last Sunday in this month. Amen. And we're excited and say uh, happy, uh, we'll say, you know, congratulations to all those who have been graduating. Amen. Um, we we want to say thank you for your obedience and your cooperation with us for for um, obeying our protocols, amen, as we come into the sanctuary. We just, uh, we thank God for you, amen, because uh, we, we want to keep you safe and we are endeavoring to uh, build this church, amen. You, you know, um, the, the numbers are saying that only about uh, about 25% of the church is not returning, amen. But, but God is going to add 50% to the number, amen? So we're, gonna, we, we're, gonna, we're not going to worry about that, amen? We're going to continue in the worship of the Lord and do what we have been mandated to do. But thank you for uh, keeping yourself and others that you care about safe. Um, uh, we, to our members that are in our extended sanctuary, those are the virtual members, we say we are glad to have you in the service this morning, amen? Two more announcements. Um, the clothing ministry will host a clothing giveaway this coming Saturday, June 12th at 10 o'clock through 12 noon, 10 to 12 noon. Clothing ministry will be doing a clothing giveaway. And uh, so we're going to ask that you would, uh, if you know of someone or if you yourself would like to partake of um, the, the, what the Lord has blessed us with through the clothing ministry, then please do so. And um, the developing your testimonies, don't throw it out. Don't get rid of it. We're going to keep filling it out. We want to make sure that you get your developing your testimony. Get that done so that the Lord might be uh, praised and we can be prepared for our up upcoming out, um, evangelism outreach events. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to yield. Uh, this space to our uh, to, to our Levitical assembly and for those of you who haven't been here um, pastor has been coined and know, known as the Lysol pastor amen amen y'all those of you who've been here with us know what I'm talking about so don't get alarmed if you see me spraying up some Lysol every now and again amen we're just doing the best we can to keep you safe and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to spray it on you. It's just here in the pulpit where we have to change some, some uh, places and arms and around the choir. So thank God for you. Amen. And uh, come on, let's be all ready to worship the Lord. Put your hands together and let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God. Good morning, good morning. It's so wonderful to see your smiling faces behind your mask because I know you're smiling because you're in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. How many of you are happy to be here this morning? Just stretch your hands out. Say, God, we are so grateful to be in the building. Hallelujah. After a year and some change, hallelujah. God, you're great and you're mighty and you kept us from all evil. Hallelujah. We bless your name. One thing that um, has, has, I think, been a universal thing. I had a conversation with a friend who's moving um, out of town last night, and she said, this time away helped me realize that the form and fashion of church is not what God was looking for. He sat us down because he was looking for relationship. And in, she said, in that year, I grew so much in how much I trust God, how much I believe in him, how much my faith has grown because I was sitting down. I didn't have the, 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 the pressure of having to be to Sunday school right now, having to go to this meeting, having to go to that meeting. How many of you took time to really say, God, pour into me right now because we're sitting down and I'm, I don't understand. And it's okay to ask God when you don't understand, amen? But he is looking for your worship and he is looking for your praise, your authentic worship and your authentic praise. Hallelujah. And that comes from you. So we're gonna worship God this morning together. This song just says, you are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Can we lift that together? 
adore you. Can we say that this morning behind your mask? So you got to say it real loud because you got a barrier. So Father, 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 we, Father, we praise you. We praise you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We love you. We love you. 
Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit, yes. We adore you. We adore you. One more time. Father, Father, Father. Father, Father, Father. We praise you. We praise you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We love you. We love you. Because you saved us. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. We adore you. We adore you. All right, let's go. It's okay to clap. If you want to stand and use your feet this morning, that's great too.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. Hey, Lord. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. Good to be home, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to join in and, and say a prayer uh, a little later um, after, after the message. Amen. For all those who just are in need of prayer. Amen. And that's all of us. Amen. At some place, some time. Amen. But I'm going to ask you right now to turn with me to the book of Acts, the first chapter. Everybody knows the first chapter of Acts, amen, or at least some of these, some part of this passage, the first chapter of Acts. Amen. And I'm just going to remind Sister Mary, just to remind you of picture from the stage perspective as well. Amen. So we thank God. Acts the first chapter. And um, starting at the fourth verse. It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. We... Um, that, that's for your hearing. That's for, that's for the hearing of the word. And if you're like me, you get excited just at the hearing of, of the word. But I want to I wanna read uh, what I call exegetically, just kind of, um, that, that means we pull out of the word what's really been buried in there, what's, what it's really saying. And just so that you could get some context for what we want to tell you on today, amen. And I believe that the Lord is, is, is a, it is um, glorified already in, in just the word that he has for his people today. Amen. And it says, and being assembled together with them. That means Jesus was in the assembly. That being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but stay in Jerusalem. Y'all remember the upper room experience where they were in the upper room but he said, but, but wait for the promise of the Father. Just wait. Now, you, sometimes we have to learn to wait. And, and, and you got to learn how to wait on the promise because the promise has the power. He said, wait on the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. That's back in Luke chapter 24 because these are the same writers. Luke wrote this book as well. He said, what you have heard from me, Luke uh, chapter 24, and, and it says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. He said, just like we baptized this morning, he said, John truly, he baptized with water, but there is another baptism that you're waiting on. Hallelujah. And he said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Hallelujah. Boy, if I could prophetically say into someone's experience, not many days from now. That whatever you're hoping for, whatever you're waiting for, whatever you have trusted God for, not many days from now, 
God is a God who will not be late because he has already scheduled your deliverance. But, but, but look what he says. He said, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, look, look at all this. After Jesus said all that, he, look what they said. They, they, had, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That's important that we understand that before we can go into the message because um, they, they wanted to know, is this the time when we're going to get what, we, what we've been waiting for? And, and, and a lot of us oftentimes are waiting on God for what we've been waiting for. But he said this, he said in verse 7, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. Hallelujah. Y'all say seasons with me seasons. It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. God knows your season. God knows your time. God, you, we, we just have to learn how in faith to be patient and wait on our season. Amen. He said, not for you to know the time of the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. And then he said this, that everybody gets excited. And I heard you all get a little excited and say, yes, Lord. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power. We love it. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost or when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in, look at this, Jerusalem. And in Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. There was, um, there, there was a church play that was about the life of Jesus in, in a church. Uh, they were putting on a production and, and they were excited because the parents were excited because the children were um, we're excited about this play, and the adults actually got excited about this, this particular play, too. It was about the life of Jesus, and, and um, they, they were waiting patiently because they had announced that they would be recruiting for the cast and, and making cast decisions and, and all that about this play. And, and the youth department in particular was very excited when they accepted the parts. They went on, some of them said, I want to be Peter, and I want to be Nathaniel, and I want to be Andrew and John, and I want to be, they, they, they all took up the parts of the disciples. You know, there were 12 parts just for the disciples. And then others of them uh, wanted to be the people of Israel. We want to be the people of Israel. Let me be Lazarus who gets up out of the grave. When, when, when Jesus comes and says, get up, I want to be Lazarus with the clothes on and I want to shed the grave clothes. And I, I want to be, and some of them said, I want to be Mary. I want to be the Mary that he forgave. And the kids, because they knew the Bible, see, they had done a great job in this church to try to help the children to understand the biblical characters and the stories that would go uh, in, into making of this, of this play and this production. They had taught it so. Isn't that just amazing church? That, that that some of them said they wanted to be pilot. You know, you always got some of them that said, no, 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 I want to be pilot. I want to be pilot because I want to stand up there on that tall podium. And, and some of them said, no, 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 I want to be Caesar because I want to be in charge of what Pilate does, and I want to be in charge. And, and others were saying, I want to be the Pharisees because they wanted to wear those long robes and, and those tall caps, and they wanted to look the part, the biblical part of, of this thing. And even one of the children said, and I want to be Satan because I want to put the horns on my head and, and I want to carry that red, I want to dress in that red and carry that pitchfork. Um, and, 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 all of a sudden, um, they ran out of people to fill the roles. Nobody else was volunteering. And the director of the play announced to the folks, they said, well, something is missing. The play director asked this question, who's going to be Jesus? And so I ask you the question today, who's going to be Jesus? My Lord. I want to get a couple things straight, or at least be the facilitator who helps get some things straight among us, um, that, that, that hopefully that, that this word will renew our minds, 
because our minds need renewing and we'll reorder our actions, which means that we got we to gotta do things in a, in a different kind of action and order to return and return us to vision, the vision of the Bible. You know, over time, we, we've gotten away from the vision of the Bible. We've been deviating from its course and, and we took a detour. Amen. Y'all just going to say amen. I'm not just talking about Haskell because we've been trying to hold on tight, but I believe the entire body of Christ. In fact, as I talk to my, my, uh, my colleagues in the gospel ministry, all those who are co-laborers with me, we agree that we have as a church of Jesus Christ gotten away from what our principal mandate was. Y'all know I've been preaching this for about two, three months. We've gotten away from what it was that God told us to do. Amen. And, and, and so we took a detour, but and, and, and Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, particularly as we focus on verse 8, hallelujah, that says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's referred to oftentimes as the missionary mandate. Will you say that with me, missionary mandate? You know, a mandate is a command, or it's, it's actually an authorization to, or to act in a particular way uh, in, on a public issue. Or, or it's actually um, the, the electorate or the body of people who would be in charge. The commanders have given a command or a commission. Amen. And I, I like this, that a commission is a community mission. That means that, that more than one was sent because one entity can have a mission, but when a commission is given, and it's usually, usually a group of people together, but this mandate was a command to go and accomplish something that we, that, that we have often overlooked, amen. Missions in our churches, I believe, for years have represented, because this is the way I grew up, uh, that, that missions represented those, those little old ladies because there, there, there weren't any men on the missions ministry, amen. We used to call it the circles, amen, missionary circles. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Missionary circle one and missionary circle two and missionary circle three and circle four we used to have and all then they would get together on mission Sunday and wear their white and you knew exactly who all the missionaries were that they were coming around because the church would look real pretty the ushers were in white and the missionaries were in white and you knew all those ladies who would go around and cook dinners to try to get to help people who were sick and shut in who had recently had surgeries or something happened in their families and they would go to the rescue of all all those folks and those were our missionaries in church y'all can talk back to me it's okay amen I haven't had a, I haven't had an audience in a long time amen that that I can hear from I've had an audience I just couldn't hear from them amen but but yeah so uh, so so the interesting thing is that uh, th those were the folks who were uh, relegated to care for the local body these missionary circles, amen, would ensure that everybody in the church had some kind of touch point from the church body. And, and, and it's important that we do that. John 17 says that if the church would take proper care of itself, of the people in the church, if the members in the church would love on the members of the church, that the folks on the outside would begin to see the kind of way that love is supposed to flow, get jealous and want to come in Y'all read Acts, Acts, I mean, John chapter 7, 17, that they would get jealous and want to come in and see what's going on on the inside, which is why we get crazy as pastors when, when the members don't get along. Because when you don't get along, then you show the folks that there's division, that there is anarchy on the inside. And when there's anarchy on the inside, the folks on the outside say, I might as well stay out here because I'm getting along with folks out here much better than the church is getting along on the inside. Can I get an amen on that one? We, we've got to transform the way we do some stuff. We've got to be, be able to say that, listen, we love each other. And when folks see the kind of love that you have, they want that kind of love that we have one toward another, that we care for one another, that we encourage one another, that we pray for one another. And when they see that, they're going to, they're going to look and say, I want to be a part of that. How many people want to be a part of that? Oh, hallelujah. We call that now our member care ministry, amen, because technically missionaries are people 
according to the Bible, that go beyond their geographical and cultural um, experience and beyond, go outside the boundary of what they're used to. Hallelujah. When you talk about missionaries, you would talk about people who generally go over the seas to, to minister to other folks. And, and we're fortunate because we have a church that, that, uh, that, that, we, um, that we help minister to overseas, over in Kenya, amen? And, and, and we're thankful, amen, that one day we, maybe some of us can go out there and visit with the church in Kenya. Hallelujah. I cannot get an amen on that one. I ain't get no, ain't get no raised hands, ain't get no amen, ain't get no nothing on that one. So you go, Pastor, and just bring back pictures, amen? Praise the Lord. Well, but, but, but we're, we're fortunate because look what the Bible actually says, that you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. But he told them, don't stay in Jerusalem. You can't stay there too long because if you stay in Jerusalem, you're just going to be ministering right around to the same folks that you've been ministering to. You know, that's the way we do in church. Can I talk for just a moment? Y'all, y'all mind if we just talk for just a moment? That's, that's kind of the way we've learned to do in church is that we've learned to just minister right to one another. And we got enough problems around, assorted problems around with each other that we can busy ourselves just ministering to one another and nobody on the outside of Jerusalem will ever get to hear the gospel message because we're too busy trying to to heal, save, deliver, set free, uh, make whole and preserve right here in the midst of the body of Christ. And I said that, you know, that when we, when we get to the point where we recognize that if the Lord were to come back right now, can I get a show of hands right now? If you're at home, raise your hand. If, can I get a show of hands? If the Lord walked through that door right now and say, y'all, it's time to go, how many folks would be going with him? Hallelujah. Now, you know, if you didn't raise your hands, I got news for you. I'm going to come talk to you after church. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, indeed. That, that, that we've got, you know, that there's a strange kind of thing going on that, that most of us who will already be going up to see Jesus, are, uh, that, that we spend all of our resource and spend all of our time ministering to the folks who are already going to be going to see Jesus. And, and don't we care about the folks? Oh, y'all, let's talk for just a moment. Because when, when, when we look at Acts chapter um, at chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. That, that, that three things we recognize in that passage right there is that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Amen. That, that you don't have to go get him, but the Holy Ghost at your invitation will come upon you. Amen. And it says, and you'll be filled with power. Amen. So guess what? I call that he will consume you. A lot of people are excited. We get we get happy when we hear when we hear that, and 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 you will have power because folks love power. How many folks love power? You love power, so that that you will be filled with power. That means that the in, in the Holy Ghost language, that means you're going to be consumed with the Holy Ghost. And if I were to ask that, that most folk don't necessarily want. They want the power, but they don't necessarily want to be consumed with the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, talk with me. Because here's the issue, that when, when we are consumed with the Holy Ghost, he's going to stop us from cussing that folk out, them folk out that get on your nerves. When you get consumed with the Holy Ghost, he's going to stop you from trying to catch up with that one that cut you off. See, God will test you every now and again and let, you, let, let somebody cut in front of you, and then you try to speed up. I know some of y'all haven't learned how to leave your little middle finger alone, amen, that when they throw it up at you, you want to throw it right back at up them. But when you are consumed with the Holy Ghost, amen, the Holy Ghost goes, uh, 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 uh. Oh, that's not how we act. That's not, we got bigger purpose. We got more stuff going on than just that. That person right there that you want to cuss out, that you want to that you want to retaliate against. God, God said, I don't want you to do that. Don't you know that person needs salvation? I was just showing you somebody who was lost in their way, and when you recognize that they're lost, you ought to begin to pray. Don't catch up and try to try to retaliate. I want you to I want you to draw back and try to 
pray, hallelujah, pray for their soul that they might be saved. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody in here. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, he will consume you. And look what he said. And he said, and you shall be witnesses to me. He said, the, he, you will witness for me, which means that he will cause you to witness. He'll come on you, consume you, and cause you to be witnesses. Amen. We, we expect the Holy Spirit to empower us with spiritual capacity when, we, when, when the Holy Ghost comes on you. And that's why folks are excited about the Holy Ghost, because I want that spiritual capacity. We want the Holy Ghost to heal us of our afflictions. Amen. What goes wrong in our life? We know that the Holy Ghost has power to fix what went wrong, and we want the Holy Ghost to do that. We want the Holy Ghost to fight our battles, our spiritual battles. How many folk know what I'm talking about? Oh, I'm getting ready to go somewhere with this. But the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost comes on you, when the Holy Ghost consumes you, he will cause you to be a witness. He didn't say anything in this passage about healing your afflictions. He didn't say anything in this passage about fighting your enemies. He didn't say anything in this passage about empowering you with all kinds of spiritual capacity so you can look bigger than I. You've got bigger eyes than little you's going on. I speak in tongues and somebody else say, well, if you don't speak in tongues, then you're not as high up as I am. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here because if you did, you'd give me an amen. Amen. I'll just amen by myself. I know what the word says. He he said, but he said, you'll be my witnesses. You see, the scope of this mandate that God gave to, to the disciples then, Jesus was saying that when the Holy Ghost, now wait for him, y'all say that, wait for him. You, you can also even tell your neighbor or say it out in the air, wait for him, because when you wait for him, God is going to empower you to become a witness. You're going to witness to me in Jerusalem. That means in your house with the folk that look like you and act like you and the folks that have similar values to you. But he said, but don't stay in Jerusalem. Go out to Judea. That means call your cousin every now and again. Your cousin is in Judea. They came out of your household, but you hadn't talked with them along in a long time, and you don't even know if they're saved or not. And a lot of us haven't called, and even when we call, we won't ask, what's going on with your soul? I know we're going to talk about Big Mama, and we're going to talk about Big Papa and all that, but, but what What's going on with your soul? Ask what's going on in Judea. But then you got to move and go out into Samaria where folks have intermingled with some other stuff that doesn't quite look like what you knew and look like what you came up with. They're a little on the strange side. They know a little bit about what you used to know, but, but they're a little strange. And God said, I want you to minister to those folks too. How many folks know what I'm talking about? We will shut down at the notion of folks that are a little different than we are. Oh, come on, somebody. Because we have, we have grown accustomed to hanging out with folks that look like us, that act like us, that, that, that seem to have our values, and anybody else that doesn't have our values, we dismiss. Oh, I wish I had a, uh, some folks say a praying church, I mean a, a witnessing church. Let me say it that way. Those who have mixed themselves with doctrines, amen, that, that you don't agree with. But God says, go out, don't stop there, but go out to the uttermost part of the earth, to the end of the world. Those folks Folks don't even speak your language. You try to communicate with them and they don't even speak across cultural and geographical boundaries. They don't even know what you're saying. Oh, somebody help me. That's why in Acts chapter 2, when the, when the day of Pentecost, and we just recently just passed the celebration of the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, that the Bible says that, that, that the, the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing mighty wind. He landed on their tongues and they were able to speak, and the folks who didn't even speak the same language were able to hear the gospel. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We're busy trying to speak in tongues among each other in the church, and, and, and what, what, what God said, the initial use for this tongues thing, 
was so that folks who you don't speak like in the uttermost part of the earth, I want you to be able to tell them the story about how I died for them, how I died to set them free. I don't want them to be limited by a language barrier. I'll give you a tongue to be able to speak to them when you don't even know their language and they don't know your language, but the Holy Ghost knows everybody's language. I wonder if some folk are hearing what I'm saying right now. We like the power of the Holy Ghost, but, but, but we don't like, we, we don't want to be witnesses for the Holy Ghost. Lord have mercy. This is, this is God's plan in this chapter for, uh, for evangelization of the world. It says that we're, we are his instruments. We are his ambassadors. If you look with me in 2 Corinthians 5 and 20, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 says that we're his ambassadors. Amen? We, we are the ones who God would, would send out in the world to, 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 to go and represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth. How many folk feel like an ambassador? You know, in order to feel like an ambassador, you got to lose sight of the fact that you're struggling in your finances because ambassadors drive fancy cars. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They live in fancy locations every now and again. Sometimes you got to remember where you come from so that even though you might have to position yourself in something that less than what you're used to, hallelujah, come on somebody, less than what you're used to, that God says that you can still get the job done, but most of us are wasting so much time feeling bad about our circumstances that God can't bring you into the place of harvest that's going to be necessary for you to be able to minister to somebody who needs to hear the gospel outside of your normal everyday circumstance. Oh, I wish I could get an amen. Hallelujah. You know, people, I thought about this. We just, you know, I've been doing a lot of marriage counseling, and I've been saying this to the marriage couples that, that people love to enjoy the benefits of marriage without the burden. Hallelujah. Let me talk about that for just a moment. I'm talking, I'm going to talk to some young folk, and I'm going to talk to some older young folk. Amen. They like to participate in married things, but they don't want the ring to signify the marriage. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that sex and that unusual sex in the those things that were, were, were reserved for the marriage institution, God says that if you want that, then you need to get married on my terms, hallelujah, because they were reserved for the marriage bed, amen. Now, I know I can't get an amen on that because folk are still struggling, still struggling, still struggling, amen, but that's all right if you're still struggling as long as you're walking toward the Lord, keep walking toward the light because struggles get lighter, hey, one day you're going to lay aside every weight, hallelujah and the sin that so easily besets you. Just keep walking in the path that says that, listen, don't let your trouble get you down and kick you back. Let your trouble be your platform. Stand on your trouble and say, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to overcome this thing sometime because my desire is to please the Lord. Look at this. It says Philippians 3.10 says this, that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship fellowship of his sufferings. We want the, the, we want the power of his resurrection. How many folk know what I'm talking about? We love the power, but, but we don't want the fellowship of his suffering. God is trying to tell us something, people of God. God is trying to tell us that if you're going to enjoy the power, you're going to have to endure the fellowship of suffering. we got to go through something if we're going to use the power. The power is not for your own personal display. The power is so that you can go into places where you have to suffer and God can keep you in the midst of trial and danger. Hallelujah. God said that we've got to learn how to go into some places, dark places, amen, to get some folk and snatch them out of the fire. But you need to go into the fellowship of suffering and expect that God will give you the power to endure that place, amen. I want to know him, but I know that I can't know him just in the power of his resurrection. We want the power, but we don't want the passion. We want the power, but we don't want to endure the pain. I wish I can get somebody right now to 
say that never mind the pain go ahead and give me the power because I'm going to walk through I got news for you church that you gonna have pain anyway whether you got the power or you don't have the power you're gonna have pain anyhow do I have a witness in the house and if you got pain then you might as well go ahead and have it with the power Lord have mercy God is asking us to, to do, to, to look, get beyond ourselves. Amen. Get over yourself. My Lord. You know, I don't usually talk like that, but y'all know what I mean. Get over yourself. It ain't about you. You and your little burning desire to have more money, more this, more that, more everything else, more name, more influence, more power, more position, more whatever it is. Let God put you in position because it really wasn't about you in that position in the first place. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm almost finished with you, but I just need you to see something. God is asking us to get beyond ourselves. You know, we, in a sense, we have learned to get settled in Jerusalem where it's all about us. I'm talking about the church. Y'all know what I mean, where it's all about us, and we get consumed with just about us. And we're not willing to get beyond our own selves, our own needs, our own desires, and our own expectations, even to embrace the expectation of God. We've been, in a sense, locked in on just us and nobody else. I wonder if y'all hear me. You say that's not true, Pastor. That's, that's not true. But my question is going to be to you. Who have you witnessed to lately? <laughs> Who have you told about the goodness of Jesus Christ? How many folks have you actually called if you if, if, if you know we can't all be street evangelists but we all got cousins we all got friends and we all got y'all know what I mean God gave us all of Jerusalem but he gave us all of Judea and he gave us all of Samaria hallelujah how many folk know y'all got some I, I know one thing I still got some cussing friends y'all know what I'm talking about hallelujah I got a friend that, that has to, he said, he, he called me Wiggy, and he'd go, hey, Wiggy, hey, Wiggy, and, and say a curse word and go, oh, man, my bad, my bad, my bad, I'm, I'm sorry. And he'll get into the next sentence and say another curse word and say, my, my bad, Wiggy, man, my bad, my bad. And, and, and sometimes I feel like hanging up. And I usually tell him, I say, if you cuss one more time, I'm going to hang this phone up on you. Yeah, I ain't going to do it, man. And, he said, and, and then when I can't get any more words from him, he said, because I don't know how to say stuff without cussing just yet. <laughs> he might be listening to us today. I'm going to really get cussed out now. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but he's in my Judea. He's in my Samaria. And I've, I've cultivated the art of not looking down on folks who are in, you know, can we tell the truth? Who were really in the same spot because we used to cuss together. He looking at me talking about, you changed, I ain't changed. And I tell him, yeah, but I'm trying to get you to change. Come on now. You know, what stops a lot of young people from being successful in school or even in life is just inadequate motivation. Y'all hear me. I'm, I'm almost finished, but I want you to hear this. Inadequate motivation. They can't, can't, can't get through, can't reach it, can't, can't obtain it because they're, they're not properly motivated. And I've seen more and more in the culture in this day. And, and, and you know, I thought about this, that the missionary mandate requires this kind of motivation that you have to love people instead of wishing judgment upon them. You know, there's too many of us that want to see people punished. Hallelujah. You know, how could you want to see people punished when Jesus wants to see them saved? Oh, please hear me. Come on now. Who's going to be Jesus? Who, who, is, who is 
is going to play the part of Jesus because we got a lot of Pilots and we got a lot of Peters and we got a lot of Nathaniels and there's some Andrews in the bank in the in, in the gang too and and John the, the sons of Zebedee you got a whole bunch of people want to be Caesar and people want to be pe people even want to be Satan y'all know what I'm talking about they want to play the devil's part and the devil's advocate but but God is asking who wants to be Jesus who's going to play that part Jesus wants to see people saved what does that say about us when you know we just got to rethink some things we got to renew our minds we got to reset we got to we got to recondition and we've got to return to vision God is saying that 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 you, you know I, I was going to do this but I, I, I was going to do this on next week but I'll, I'll just give you a preview you know what God says that in Matthew chapter 24 he says that when everybody has been exposed to the word of God when everybody has the gospel has reached the ends of the earth according to this chapter then the the end will come. And a lot of folks are living like this. I don't want the end to come yet. I ain't get my Mercedes yet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work on my Mercedes. And when the end comes, you're going to have your Mercedes plus some stuff. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to say, that, that we're not serious about what we're trying to do to get that gospel to go where it's supposed to go. God said, you're stuck in Jerusalem. You're stuck over there, and some people have managed to wiggle out of Jerusalem and maybe get a little no make a little noise in Judea, but you're scared of Samaria. You're scared of folk over there because you don't, you don't know enough Bible. Let me say not you, but we don't know enough Bible to be able to hang out in Samaria because those folk might change the way we believe before we can change the way they believe. Oh, my gosh. Preach, pastor. This is the, the, this is the motivation. The motivation is that we got to love people, but we got a desire to see the society follow God. God wants this word out to the end of the earth. We, we, you know, we need a moral foundation or a re-foundation in this country. Things are getting out of, out of bounds. We've gotten too far out. Now the Bible's on the outskirts. And what the culture says is in, is in. We're living a backwards kind of society. Motivation. We got to have, you know, a, a motivation, proper motivation comes when you have an adequate understanding of hell. Hallelujah. When you have an adequate understanding of hell. Yes, that's what pastor said. That when you have an adequate understanding of hell, meaning the absence of God, and the absence of God means the absence of peace, power, protection, provision, productivity, means the absence of purpose, and it means the absence of prosperity. Can you imagine living under those conditions where nothing that God represents is, is, is actually your agenda? Nothing that got no grace, no favor, no mercy, no peace, no loving kindness, no joy no satisfaction no healing no deliverance that's all the stuff that God brings but in hell it's the absence of all that because God isn't there and if that were not worse if, if it couldn't get any worse that God is absent and then they throw that into the lake of fire to be tormented forever now some folk look at people and say they need to suffer like that I need to tell you that if you got that on your spirit right now that you need more Jesus hallelujah hallelujah motivation you got to have the compassion of Christ which he demonstrated when he walked among us he didn't have to take time to heal and save deliver he didn't have to take time to tell that woman who was caught in the act of adultery he could have condemned her but instead of condemning her he said where are your accusers get up sin no more he was concerned are we concerned who's going to be Jesus we've had a missionary experience I'm, I'm going to let you commune but I want to tell you this we've had a missionary experience God allowed us to be put out of the church house so that we could go back that's what missionaries do they can't always get to the church building Sometimes they have, to, they have to worship in caves. Sometimes they have to hide behind corners and lift their hands. And, and some, sometimes we, we, we talked to a missionary who hadn't had a shower 
in six months when he came back to the States. He said, the only thing I want, he said, I'm not worried about, I ain't worried about cars and I'm not worried about fancy food and all that kind of, I just want to take a hot shower because I've become accustomed to getting dirty water from the muddy Jordan to pour to wash my body with. And, and we've become accustomed to, we've become accustomed to the accoutrements of life so much so that we've lost this missionary purpose and this missionary mandate. The, we've had this missionary experience worshiping for the house. And I, I pray that didn't make us lazy about the things of Christ, but more determined. It's made me more determined because now I understand their plight a little better. Yet we're commanded in Scripture not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. According to Hebrews 25, it says we, we don't, don't forsake your assembling of yourself. But before we were commanded to not forsake the assembling of ourselves, we were commanded to be witnesses in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Perhaps God let the doors get shut so we could get out beyond ourselves, get out of our Jerusalem, and be able to have to get into some of the other towns territories where you can be of good influence. God wants you out of the four walls of your own desires and out of your own culture of worship. You get where I'm coming from. How does this help me, Pastor? It helps you because, you know, because because we're worried about how we're going to pay our bills and how we're going to fix our cars and how we're going to fix our house and how we're going to deal with these health issues and finance issues that we have. How we're going to deal with our own personal issues, my morality and my personality, my sexuality, my spirituality, the things that make life challenging, the things that make life hurt. That's what I'm worried about. But God said, if you would worry about my stuff, I could worry about your stuff. But you're too consumed with your stuff for me to be concerned about your stuff. God said that, he said in Matthew 6, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, I'll add these other things to you. I'll deal with your stuff hallelujah if you'll deal with my stuff if you will take care of my house hallelujah I'll take care of your house y'all don't hear what I'm saying right now I believe the body of Christ is powerless right now because we're too focused on what we got going on that we can't get with Jesus he said if you begin witnesses I'll fit witnessing I'll feed you in the harvest field he said don't muzzle the ox while he's treading out the corn I'll feed you in fields if you want to lead he said if you want fancy food then go witness to fancy people because that's where they eat and they need the gospel preached to them too and so if you just eat with fancy folk and tell them about the goodness of Jesus they'll give you some of their fancy food he said that if you will hallelujah just do my will and do my way if you take care of my house I'll take care of your house if you love on my people, I'll bring that love that you give away back in your circumstance. I'll do for you what you do for others. Hallelujah. But I need somebody to be a missionary. I need somebody to tell the story. Who's going to be Jesus? Who will stand up and tell the gospel that I died on a cross on Calvary? tell somebody I don't hate them but I love them and their sinful ways I can clean up who's gonna be Jesus hey. hallelujah the Lord said He'll supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. But he said it to the Philippians who were a group of people who were taking care of his church. I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about the assignment. And y'all are going to hear me say it once. You're going to hear me say it twice. You're going to hear me say it three times. You're going to hear me say it till I'm blue in the face. Go out and tell somebody about Jesus and his loving kindness. You're the witness. 
can I get a witness in the building? Can I get a laborer among us? Come on, let us bow and let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God, and these are not just words that pour forth from our lips, Lord God. Our hearts want to be right, Lord God, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, give us a burden, Lord God, as we see the broken, Lord God. Help us to remember what you did for us. Help us not to be hypocritical like the Pharisees. We don't want to dress up in the Pharisees' clothes. Who wants to be Jesus? I want to be Jesus. And we understand, Master, that it's going to take some suffering. But we know that there's, where there's suffering, there's power. Hey! Glory, God. Help us, Lord. We want to see you, Jesus. Hey! We want to see you, God. High, lift it up. You said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Help us lift you, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, Lord, to lift you. That you draw all men to you, God. Help us, God. Get us away from our own selfish desires and our own selfish concerns. Help us to lift you, God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, thank you for keeping us. We didn't have to make it back in the sanctuary, but you saw fit to keep us. Hallelujah. Our sleeping bed could have been our cooling board, God. But you said, no. I got work for you to do. And because you sacrificed for us, help us to sacrifice for you. Help us to love on you and to do what you say. Show us your way help us to walk in it. I ask your blessing on all these, your people right now, God. These are those whom you love. These are those whom you died for. Lord, charge them up. Put new batteries in them, God. Restore them. And if there be any sin among them, God, you wash sin every day all day long wash them Lord that they may be clean again we bless you God and we honor you in Jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah can you just bow with me for one moment because if there's someone anyone who is struggling right now and needs the Lord Jesus Christ to come in their lives. We're going to ask you to ask God, rush into them. Rush to their rescue. If you're listening to this broadcast, if you're here in this building, wherever you are, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible makes us this promise that you will be saved. That means you'll be rescued. That means you'll be healed, delivered, set free, made whole. He'll fix your broken places. Don't worry about it. Come as you are. You say, how do I come? Push the contact button on our website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com. 
push the contact button on our church app. Just get in touch with us and say, I pray to receive Jesus. And we'll send you some stuff. We'll send you something to read, but we'll all send you our love, hallelujah, and our prayers so that you can come on in the fold and be a part of the kingdom building that God has given. Hallelujah. We're praying for you. If there's anyone in the building, just lift your hand if you say, I need Jesus, Pastor. That's me. I need him. I need him today. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. If you... Hallelujah. Bless God. We're going to get ourselves prepared for communion. Hallelujah. Oh, don't I feel like communing with our Father. Then we'll dismiss you. Sweetie, can I have one of those? Uh, Sister Wickfall? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If you're at home with us right now, worshiping with us, we're asking you to go ahead and get your communion prepared. And is there anyone who does not have a communion set? Anyone? Lift your hands and one will be brought to you. said take eat this is my body which is broken for you let us eat of this bread his broken body together likewise after supper he took the cup and you know what the cup represented it represented his blood that was shed on the cross on Calvary the one that cleans us the one that gave us remission of sin and he said to his disciples, I won't drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until that day I drink it new with you until in my father's house. But until then, drink ye all of it. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you'll place your communion sets back in your bag and there'll be a, a receptacle as we get ready to dismiss that you can... You can deposit those in. Amen. Hallelujah. The ushers will be coming to help us with our dismissal. So we're going to ask you that you would just stay put until the ushers would come and, and dismiss your role. Just to keep us safe and to get us in the practice of doing some safe worshiping together. I want to thank, amen, Sister Mary Clark and all of our committee all of our leaders who have, who have labored and been diligent to help us to worship, to return to worship, to return to the sanctuary, amen, excuse me, in worship, in a safe manner. And thank you for being diligent to come. 
I'm going to do this. It says, the Bible says, now may the grace and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest upon you, rule over you, guide you, direct you, and keep you. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. 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 God bless you. The ushers are coming now.